Good morning, everybody. I'm going to make this video, I'm going to call it Tips for Beginners. And I'm going to talk about five tips. There are many more, but we're going to talk about five today. Number one is getting, getting the birds healthy, how to medicate. Number two, be sure the birds only drink out of the pigeon house drinker. Number three, only ship motivated birds. Tip number four, feeding racing pigeons. Tip number five, training your pigeons. Okay, let's get started. This is going to be a pretty long video. So if you haven't got time, come back to it. It'll really help you get to the top of the race sheet. How to get the birds healthy? Well, for me, in my experience, I had to medicate the birds. There was a couple medications I used. One was Global's Multimix. And what that covers is coccidiosis, canker, and worms. I also used LA-200 that was for a respiratory problem and it was an injectable antibiotic. Okay, let's go back to Multimix. When you're treating your birds for coccidiosis, worms and canker with Multimix, you have to be absolutely sure that the birds are drinking it. How do you do that? You be sure that it's in the water can or the drinker for five or six days. I prefer six days. Pigeons don't like to consume some medications and they will go three, four, even five days without taking a good drink. If they don't drink the medicine, you're never going to clear up the problem. You have to be absolutely sure that the birds are drinking the medicine. I'm going to talk about an experience that I had when I was about 14 years old. We were not racing very well back then, but my brother had a friend who gave him some medication. And when he gave him the medication, he told him, make sure the birds drink it all. Do not replace the water. They must drink it. Well, when we put that medicine in the water, it was there for four days. And this was only a gallon, maybe a gallon and a half drinker. They did not drink the medicine. But eventually, they got so thirsty that they drank it. The birds were not let out. They were not flown for four or five days because they would not drink the water. So be absolutely sure that your birds are drinking the medication you're giving them. Okay, let's move on to LA-200. LA-200 is basically teriomycin. It's an injectable product. 
the one thing you want to do with your antibiotics is get it into the bloodstream. Oral antibiotics, when the birds ingest it, goes down to the gizzard. And in the gizzard, a lot of it is destroyed. It's actually turned into vitamin B12. But that is not going to cure your problem. Bacterial infections normally are respiratory infections. And if you don't get it into the bloodstream and you don't get it down to the small capillaries in the lungs, you, well, the pigeons have air sacs. But if the antibiotic does not get down into those air sacs, you're never going to cure the problem. That's why you use an injectable antibiotic. I think you only need like two, 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 I can't say it, two lines. Oh God, it's not coming to my head. On a syringe. So it's only two little lines that you need to inject into the pigeons. You can inject it in the back of the neck or you can inject it into the breast muscle. If you inject it into the breast muscle, the birds will probably bleed a little bit. But the antibiotic will get directly into the bloodstream and not be destroyed in the gizzard. And that's what's important about that. Okay, let's move on to tip number two. I got to get my paper. Remind me. Okay. Be sure your birds only drink out of the pigeon house drinker. Now, that's pretty impossible. But what do I mean by that? You've medicated your birds. They're healthy. Everything is fine. But if your birds land up on top of a roof and drink out of a gutter, any wild birds or any bird that sits on that roof and passes droppings is probably going to have some sort of a worm. And it will wash down into the gutter and sit there. Not all gutters drain completely and they don't always dry out. So your birds will walk down to the end of the roof, drink out of that gutter, and be contaminated again. This happened to me many years ago. I could not understand why my pigeons weren't coming home on time. I finally beat them home one day and I observed them go right down to the gutter to take a drink. They had flown 40 miles and they were thirsty. When I covered them gutters and treated the birds for worms and coxie and canker, my racing performance went way up, way up. So you want to be sure that your birds are not drinking out of gutters, puddles, or pools, or any sitting water around the loft. If they are, you're always going to have problems. No matter how clean you clean the loft, they're getting contaminated outside of the loft. Okay, let's move on to trip. Tip number three. Tip number three. Only ship motivated birds. That's pretty hard to do. How do you only ship motivated birds? 
Well, I'm going to go back to a video I made about Tony Malucci. Tony Malucci was a world-renowned pigeon flyer. He was all over the world. But he called my brother John the champ. When he was asked why my brother John was a champ, he said, John comes down to the club, ships five, six, maybe seven birds. Everyone else ships 20 birds. But before they got five or six in the clock, John has clocked almost all his pigeons. That's a champ. I am not going to go into motivation. What I am going to tell you is buy my book, Become a, a Racing Pigeon Whisperer. I'll provide a link to it in the description on this video. But do try to ship only motivated birds and understand what motivation really is. The booklet is short and to the point. It's not going to go into a lot of detail, eye sign, feather sign, anything like that. It's going to take you from the bottom of the race sheet to the top of the race sheet in a short time. And that's what it's designed to do. So it's not a big booklet, it's just very short. You could probably read it in less than a half hour, but you will pick up a lot of knowledge on how to motivate birds and when to ship them. Okay, let's move on. Tip number four. I've covered this in so many videos. Feeding racing pigeons. I get this question so often. Feeding racing pigeons is not the mixture. It's not a particular grain. It's not one thing. A good commercial 14% protein Mixture is more than adequate. That's all you need. What you want to add to that is a little bit of peanuts and a little bit of sunflower hearts. The reason for them to in seeds is to add fat to the feed. Pigeon Commercial feeds are very low on fat. And that's what pigeons use for energy. So you got to provide some fat. When you get to a three or 400 mile race or a 500 mile race, you want to increase the fat because they're going to be flying for 12, 13, 14 even 15 hours, and some races take two days. The birds don't come home on the day. So they need that energy to get up on the second day and continue on home. And the only way they're going to get that energy is from the fats in the feed. A commercial mix with peanuts and sunflower hearts added to it is more than adequate. I would also put some brewer's yeast and powdered milk on the feed two or three times a week. You could do it every day if you want, but that will provide them with all the vitamins and minerals that they need. Well, not all the minerals. You've got to give them grit, but it will provide them with what they need. How to feed them. When you're feeding your pigeons, 
You're feeding them by hand. You're whistling, making noise, so they understand that you're in the loft feeding them. And when they hear that whistle, they will drop out of the sky and run into your loft. It takes time, but it will get the birds under control. Let's move on. Number five, training the pigeons. Whoa, this is a this is different. The harder you can train them, the better they perform. What do I mean by this? If you took them out 30 miles, 35 miles, and trained them every day, that's pretty good training. You can be very successful with that type of training. But if you want to have an advantage over your competitors, you got to get them out to 100 miles as often as you can. If you can get them out that 100 miles three, four, five times before the first race, then you can bring them back to your 30 mile station and the pigeons will perform better. I like to train my birds in twos, threes, or fives. Two birds because they race one another home. Three birds because there's an odd bird in there. Five birds again with the odd bird. I try not to let my pigeons up in flocks. I drove out a hundred miles. I spent a couple hours getting there. I'm going to sit there for a couple more hours training my birds. I want them to make mistakes, but I don't want to lose them. If you let your birds up in a flock and somebody else is training or a combine is training or racing, your birds get caught up in that flock and you can lose them all. Now that's happened to me also. I have lost whole flocks of racing homies. I have lost hens when I let them all up together. I have lost cocks when I let them up all together because they hit training birds and were carried off way too far for them to return. So be careful when you're training your birds. Small groups, this way if you do lose some or they get carried off, it's not all of them. And when you toss the birds, try to wait five, ten minutes. At first, they'll be getting together, but after a while, they'll be coming straight home. They understand that they got to go home. And that's how I trained my birds. Okay, that was the five tips. I'm going to cover them again. I'm going to talk about them again. Tip number one, healthy birds, how to medicate. Tip number two, only drink out of your pigeon house drinker. Tip number three, only ship motivated birds, and that's in the book. Tip number four, feeding racing pigeons. Tip number five, training your pigeons. I'll be trying to do some more tips as I go along for you beginners. I'm only here to help you. My racing days with pigeons are long over. I had a lot of success. I won every prize imaginable. And you can too. I'm not a genius. I'm just a very experienced pigeon flyer. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe and give it a thumbs up.